This time we build on what we learned last time about our multiples and look at a further concept devised by Van Tharp called expectancy. This is even more useful because when using a fixed percentage risk model, it can actually tell us what we can expect our system to achieve in the future. So stay tuned. In addition to telling us what we can expect a system to achieve in the future, I find that Van Tharp's expectancy metric can also provide valuable intelligence when assessing different parameters in an optimization. So let's take a closer look. So last time we introduced the concept of R multiples, so just a very quick recap on that. Let's imagine we have a trade entry at this point. And because this is a long trade, it means that we're going to set our stop loss below. Now, in this particular case, as you can see, the stop loss doesn't get hit. So let's imagine that we close the trade here for a profit. Now, the whole basis of our multiples is calculated on the difference between the entry and the stop loss. And this always represents minus 1R, which of course is the worst case risk of the trade. Now, from this, we can calculate an R value for each and every trade. And trades that close at the stop loss, of course, have this minus 1 value. But trades such as this one have positive R values based on the multiple of the price difference. So, as you can see in this particular case, this is about 1.8R. And then moving on from this, we can analyse multiple trades to put together what's called an R multiple distribution. So here, as you can see, we have eight example trades and three of those, because of their R values, we know closed out at their stop loss and the other five were profitable trades with values of 1.8R, 2.7, 2.3, 1.2 1.3. Now that we have this distribution, we can now calculate the expectancy. And this is the mean or the average of each of the R multiples across the distribution. So in this particular case, we need to add up all of the individual R values, which comes to 6.3 R, divide by the number of trades, which is eight. And so we see the expectancy of the system here is positive 0.79. Now, this is really useful because it gives us an indication of what an average trade will usually achieve. So let's look at a quick example. Let's say you risk 0.5% of your equity on each trade. So this is the maximum risk if your stop loss were to be hit. Now, using the expectancy, we know that a minus 1R trade is 0.5%, and therefore we can calculate that a system with a 0.79R will make on average 0.39% on each trade. And this is really valuable information to know because now based on how many trades this system produces, we can get a good indication of the potential return from that system. Now, this illustration here was based on just eight trades. And believe me, that is no trades at all that would have no statistical significance whatsoever. Ideally, when you perform these calculations, you should be basing them on thousands of trades, and only then are you going to get statistically significant results that will have any real meaning. But when you do that, it means that you can perform an evaluation of individual trading strategies to decide, firstly, are they viable to trade? And then secondly, get an indication of what you could expect to make per trade based on a set risk level, and then based on the number of trades, 
what, for example, the annual return might look like. But I think it's also really useful when you're evaluating parameter values in an optimization. Clearly, some of those values will produce higher expectancy than others. And so this is a metric you can actually use as part of your evaluation to determine which parameters are best. But expectancy does have some limitations. Let's take two examples, one where you have a system with an expectancy of 2R and another where it has 1R, or equally these could be different parameter values of the same system producing these different expectancies. Can we always say that the parameters with a value of 2R are better than those with 1R? Well, we can't. And one of the reasons for that is that expectancy doesn't give you any indication of the variability of the individual R values that went into calculating the expectancy value. So maybe the 1R system only had negative R values 10% of the time. And so here, although smaller, the consistency of the profitable trades was much higher. Whereas the 2R system might have had negative R value trades 50% of the time, but then had a small number of very high R value trades, such as 10R or 15R. And so the returns here are much more inconsistent, and it's just those high R values that are raising the average. So the first limitation can be summarized by the fact that the expectancy gives no indication whatsoever about the variability of the individual trade results. Now, there is a second limitation. And again, we can ask ourselves this same question. Is a 2R system always better than a 1R system? And again, the answer is no. What if the 2R expectancy system only traded three times per year. So each trade on average would make 2R, but what that means is that if you were using a 0.5% risk model per trade, the system would therefore make 3% per annum. But let's say that the 1R expectancy system traded 200 times per year. Using the same risk model of 0.5%, this system would make you 100% per annum. So although expectancy is useful in telling us what on average we should expect each trade to make, these limitations mean that it's far from being a holy grail. But there is something that can help, and this is called the system quality number. And this is a metric that was also developed by Van Tharp, and it attempts to address these limitations directly. Now, what we've already learned about our multiples and expectancy is still required because these are the fundamental building blocks of the system quality number. But it expands on these concepts to produce a metric that is a much better evaluator of a system's performance and also usefulness. And the SQN is the topic of the next episode. So please do remember to give me a thumbs up if you've got value from today. Remember to subscribe so you get notified when other content like this becomes available. And now until next time, trade safe.